the world, doesn't the world lose some of its allure? You thought it was so great when you were young, you were excited about this and about that and all its possibilities. You get old, you look, said, God, get me out of here. Stop the world, I want to get off, you know, the old saying. Lord, help us to, to never lose the sense of who we are and what God has called us to and what, the, what this world is really about. Because it affects the way that we live. It affects everything. We can get in some dark places if we don't. But now he understands. He looks at the very people that he had thought were so great. He thought that they were somebody to be envied. Oh, I wish I were like them. Oh, I see them. They, they have so much. I wish my bank, look at my bank account. Negative balance again. <laughs> Bounced another check. I, I, I get up this morning, I feel lousy, and I look at them, and they're out there having a big time, and man, I wish I were like them. Oh, you don't wish you were like them. God has put them in slippery places. I'll tell you, people of this world who are just going along, serving their flesh, serving their own egos, trampling on others, doing whatever it takes to, set, to gratify this nature they were born with, they have no thought of God, no conscience in what they do. You think they're to be envied? Oh, God. God, lift us up into a place where we can see things as they really are. How suddenly are they destroyed? Interesting analogy the Lord draws in verse 20. He said, as a dream, when one awakes, so when you arise, O Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. Now, I don't know about you. Most of us, I suspect, are, are the same way. Our dreams don't make much sense. Uh, they're just a jumble of bits and pieces of this and that in our, in our lives and stuff that doesn't go together. And you wake up, what in the world, if you can even remember it, was that about? You know, my dreams, I could still dunk a basketball. Uh, you know, I could do all kinds, I could fly, I could do all kinds of things. Of course, I never could do that, but, but uh, you know, it's just, you wake up and you have to just laugh because it's not real. And that's what God is saying about, about the, what appears to be very real in this world. It has no more reality measured in the value system of eternity than, than one of these stupid dreams you and I dream. I mean, do you base your life upon some of the jumble of dreams that you have? You better not. <laughs> You're going to be a, in a mess if you do. Now, I know God can give real dreams. That's a different thing. But you understand what he's talking about here. This is, this is that stupid stuff that, that you just have to laugh at. But now, so he, now he gets a different vision. First of, all, the, first of all, the key is he gets a different vision of God. That's the key to everything in life. If we understand who God is and, and all the, the wonderful things about him, it sets everything else in its proper place. You leave him out of the equation, you're going to be in a mess trying to figure it all out. It doesn't make sense to anybody. So don't be, so if you're trying to figure it out and you say, what's the matter with me? I can't figure it out. Well, don't feel alone. Nobody can figure it out unless they're really in touch with God and his truth and his purposes. Well, now, not only does he see them, he begins to see himself. You ever come to the end of one of these times and you look back and you say, boy, was I a doofus or, or what? He said, when my spirit was grieved, my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, it, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Well, he comes to a true recognition of where he'd been. He didn't sugarcoat it, did he? That's like a brute beast. You know, it's good to be honest. The Lord doesn't despise honesty. He loves it. But here's a man who's, there's a genuine repentance. There's a genuine self-evaluation. He doesn't say, well, I just, I messed up a little. I'm really okay. No, he said, I was, I was just totally 100% wrong. You know, if we're 100% wrong, it's just good to say, I was 100% wrong. You won't die. Well, part of you will, but the part that needs to. 
But you know, this, is, this guy was in a bad place. He doesn't just say, I was sad a little bit. He says, I was grieved. My spirit embittered. This had hung around a while. This wasn't just some overnight thing that he experienced. This was a long period of time. And you think about it, all the times he went into the temple and just carried on like, he, like everything was okay, clanged his cymbal right on cue. Inside, this bitterness had taken root. I'm wasting my time here. I, I'm so, and yet I know I can't talk about it. What will people say? Oh, I'm just in a bad place. I can't figure it out. I'm in a mess. But he looks back and realizes the condition that he had been in. I was senseless, ignorant, a brute beast before you. But you know, one of the, the next few verses are, some, are the most wonderful part of this passage. God knows that sometimes we get in places like this, even his people, even the ones you look up to, even the ones that feel like, oh my God, people look up to me, I can't say what I'm feeling, I can't, oh. Even people in that condition. Yet, I am always with you, and you hold me by my right hand. Think about what he's saying there. Think about the God that we serve who would look down at his servant and see a man going through the motions, bitterness taking root in his heart, who's he's just in his heart he's thinking, I'm wasting my time serving God. And what does God do? Does he say, well, the heck with you. I'm leaving you just, you just come to me, you call upon me. When you get straight, you come and I'll be back. He never, ever let go of his hand. Praise God. I'm always with you. Think of the knowledge that, that comes to him when he's out of the jungle, up on the mountain with the Lord, looking at him and he realizes, God, you never left me. All of this was true, but you never left me. Praise God. You know, I see the Lord allowing this, certainly. He knew all the time. I'm sure his heart was sad, but I, you know, the Lord knew that bringing him through this, there was going to be a, a higher and greater and deeper appreciation for the goodness of God than he had ever experienced in his life. Praise God. Sort of like Peter, when he, when he went through did the Lord just write him off, forget about him? No. He said, when you are converted, when you're changed, you strengthen your brethren. Yeah. It's interesting. He didn't tell the other brethren to strengthen him. He said, you strengthen them. I'm going to do something for you that's going to put you in a position to help somebody else. Yeah. 